Okie dokie. Okay. Uh, this video would be kind of easy to make. Really easy. The three best bokeh lenses in the world, which I have right here, by the way. And I've shot the ever-loving piss out of these three. I had another YouTuber call me today. He says, what I like about your YouTube channel is you're so crass. You're so down to earth. You just, you don't have any pretense about you. I, I was like, I, are you basically saying that I'm kind of crude? <laughs> <sighs> the truth really hurts, right? Um, anyway, I got the link below. You can take a look at some of these images. Um, two of these are trio plan. Now, uh, one of the key parts of the word trio plan is the word tri, like tricycle. These are uh, three element lenses. This is the uh, trio plan 50 millimeter f2.9. This is the ever famous, super famous trio plan 100 millimeter f2.8. Now these lenses, here's the, here's the enigma, and I will spell it out for you, and there's not another video like this on earth. I have more experience, and I'm, this is not an understatement, I have more experience with these lenses than probably even the people in Germany, Deutschland, that are building these lenses. Um, and there's not another video out there like this. There's like somebody that has one of these lenses, someone else has another one, but nobody has all three of them. And uh, yeah, getting to the point, right? I will uh, give you the lowdown and the issue. First, before actually discussing specifically the lenses, let's first discuss the issue. These are really, these are Cook triplet designs. Triplet meaning three elements. Um, really old design lenses. Now you can find these lenses, depends on which one, like the trio plan 100 millimeter average is like six seven hundred bucks but it's a really old lens it's older than your great grandfather or basically as old and uh, it's in bad shape the grease is dried up in it it's got haze mold and fungus or somebody rebuilt it and re-greased it took it all apart and put it back together and it still looks like it still is as wrecked as a five dollar hooker on navy payday <laughs> i mean it is rough because it's really old. The other issue is you got that option where you either pay a fortune for one that's been rebuilt and still looks like crap or um, you got one that's just uh, relatively cheap uh, the old one and uh, it needs to be fixed it needs like three hundred dollars worth of repair done to it so that's a problem. The other problem are these modern Deutschland lenses which are really, 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 really expensive. $1,600, oh my God! <laughs> $1,300, oh my God, that's crazy! A three element lens, $1,300, no, $1,400 actually. Uh, yeah, <laughs> $1,300 for the Primatar 58 millimeter, Primo Plan, excuse me, I said Primatar because I was using that lens today. The Primo, Primo Plan 58 millimeter F1.9. Right, basically sitting right here is somewhere right around $4,200. Don't worry, I didn't pay that. Nor am I sponsored by Meyer Optic Girl. If I was, I wouldn't be like saying that these are horribly overpriced lenses. Um, now, they are German precision lenses. They're modern recreations of these lenses. Now, here's the advantage of these lenses over the old ones, okay? I already told you the disadvantages of the older ones. The disadvantage of these, obviously, is that they're insanely overpriced. Um, the advantage is, is that obviously they're new and they're fresh, or they use shot glass, you know, brand new grease. I mean, these were probably made just a few months ago. One, this one was made at least probably about a year ago. So you got no issues with optics, haze, mold, or fungus. Um, they have uh, superior AR coating on them. Not that that really makes any damn difference. Some of my favorite lenses are some really, really ancient lenses that are not coated at all. The only issue, the time that's an issue, is if you're shooting towards the sun and you got nasty flare. People think coatings make a huge difference. They do for uh, zooms and other things that have an enormous amount of glass in them. But when you're talking about three, four, five, six element lenses, no. Most people, like 99% of you, could never tell the difference between a completely uncoated lens where all elements are uncoated versus one that has super coatings on it. So that's a fact, by the way. Um, this one, like the uh, Trio Plan uh, 50 millimeter uh, one uh, f2.9, has actually been uh, designed such that the uh, very front element you can screw it all the way out, well, this far, and you can get in where the old lens you can get in. I think like 
three feet or so, this one you can get in much closer. And when you get in close relative to your background elements, then that gives you, it takes your super bokeh into super, super, super bokeh. So this uh, zooming front element is unique to this uh, Trioplan 50mm f2.9. Otherwise, it is optically identical. All of these are optically identical to the old, old, old originals. Um, here's, now this is where I'm actually going to define these lenses because people ask, well, which is the best of them all? Really, that's a, a tough one. Um, this is the lens that is most famous, the Trioplan 100mm 2.8. But this is, if all of these were priced the same, and knowing what I know, this is the lens I'm least likely to grab. By the way, the three element lenses, which are these uh, two element, uh, excuse me, these uh, two trio plans, are um, uh, the most fuzzy. Now, we're not talking about uh, sharpness here, and of course, sharpness is not everything, obviously so, and you can slide your sharpness slider over there. And you're buying these lenses, they get this crazy ass bokeh, right? I mean, they are impressionistically beautiful. I mean, look at that bokeh. Look at it! Look at it, damn it, look at it. Hot stuff. That is tougher than woodpecker lips. That is uh, tougher than a brick crap house. That's, uh, that's awesome. Um, so you're not buying these for sharpness. If you want that, you buy a modern piece of crap. The only reason, you know, these lenses were, were uh, re, uh, reincarnated because of this. They weren't reincarnated because they were sharp. They were never sharp. They were reincarnated because people want this. You see all that down? Meow. That's what people want. Meow. That's why these were recreated. Well, that and to make my optic uh, girdlet some uh, more money, money, money. <laughs> so I would reject the 100mm 2.8 trio plan. Not that it's not awesome. Uh, it is awesome. Now, since this is also a three-element lens, the uh, trio plan 50mm f2.9, I mean, it's, it ain't a sharp lens. And it's an f2.9, uh, which is no big deal. I mean, you're shooting out bright light or speed light with this lens. doesn't make any difference. Um, you do have the fact that you can get in closer and you can get the, uh, this, by the way, is the best super insane bokeh lens out there, period. This is it, the Trioplan 50mm f2.9. The downs, and it's been re-engineered with the zooming front element, which means you can get even closer, which means your background bokeh balls go from hmya to hmya, which is excellent, but it's... not a sharp lens. Not only is it not sharp, it's about as sharp as uh, one of those sporks. You know what a spork is? That crazy plastic crap that it is a, supposed to be a knife and a spoon, but it's, it's neither a good knife nor a good... It's not sharp at all. <laughs> you can't, you know. Uh, yeah. This image, is, by the way, is taken with the, uh, the uh, Primo plan. The best of these three, and it depends, and it's a 1.9. This is a five-element lens. This lens is decently sharp, straight out of camera. And it's sharp enough to... Uh, Impress uh, with dragging a little and adding a little sharpness, dra uh, dragging a little sharpness and uh, definition in uh, Lightroom or Photoshop. But it's perfectly fine straight out of the camera. Add a little saturation, which actually got wonderful saturation. Um, these are hard with focus peaking because they are three element lenses and not sharp, period. These you will have to have some crazy skills with. People get frustrated with these trio plans because they're not sharp, and because they're kind of definitely not sharp, then focus peaking under ideal conditions ain't so good. I mean, which means you got to have some mad skills for manually focusing. It's like, well, my mirrorless camera's got focus peaking, it should work. It's like, yeah, but when you have lenses like this that are triplets, it doesn't, because the camera's like, what the hell have you got mounted on me? You got the, like, most unsharp lens on planet Earth. And uh, those are. So this is a five-element lens. And also, too, as I mentioned before in many videos, 55s and 58-millimeter lenses, as a general philosophy, which is 95% accurate or higher, are always better than 50 millimeters. 55 and 58 are magical, period. Doesn't matter when they were made. And uh, generally always superior to 50 millimeters. 50 millimeters is kind of like the poor schmucks version of a 55 or a good 55 or good 58. That's not to say there aren't some crap 55s and 58s out there, but generally speaking. So this is really the best of the three, so to say. Um, the bulk is about 85% as good as the uh, Super Wonder bulk out of the 50mm 2.9. Um, I think it's the same price, both $1,400 for this one and this one. You can't get as close as you can with this one, so you can't get that Super Wonder bokeh. 
Um, all three of these are Nikon mount, by the way. They're available in like six different mounts. Uh, right now I have an M42 adapter, excuse me, a Nikon to Fuji X adapter. I use these on my Fuji films uh, exclusively. Um, have used them on Nikons actually quite a few times, but uh, the Primo Plan 58 is the, uh, the best of these three. Um, but it is a five element lens. It is more than sufficiently sharp. It's a, a wonderful lens. I'll put a link to a couple of these, uh, a few of these shots below. This is a shot from the 58 millimeter 1.9. Uh, so is that. All I said, here we go. There's that. Bubble bokeh. These are the three most radical bokeh lenses out there. Bubble bokeh, that is. There's catadioptric bokeh. There's onion ring. Onion ring bokeh is actually uh, something that's undesirable. Onion ring is what you get uh, from lenses that are not super finely polished, and you can see the concentric uh, casting and polishing marks on the uh, elements as uh, envisioned in the bokeh. Here we go. Here's where I sprayed some water on the flower, and you can see this crazy ass bokeh in the background. And look at these bubbles. Ah, oh, it's beautiful. Um, so the three of these, this really is my pick, is the best. However, you can get closer with the 50 millimeter 2.9 and also extend out the front element, which is unique to this reincarnation of the old, 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 old your grandpa 50 millimeter of 2.9 trio plan. So this lets you get really close. But, like I said, focus peaking is uh, bad because your your camera needs decent focus for that focus peaking to work and since these lenses ain't sharp at all i don't care what camera you got it's like i got my focus peaking on it's like yeah that's wonderful and excellent with like sharp lenses like this and every other halfway decent sharp lens but not so on these lenses that's why these lenses frustrate people but i'm really good with manually focusing so i don't really give a crap i mean i don't need the peaking you know, nail focus because, I mean, I grew up on manual focus lenses. I'm happy with manual focus lenses. I didn't, you know, I got by for decades without focus peaking, and I can surely get by it now, but uh, for the rest of you, you probably won't like that because of that fact. So, this is the best pick of the three. Um, also the sharpest, but you can't get it as close. But the huge book of balls on uh, the 58... 1.9, and I said it's a faster lens, 1.9 versus 2.9 versus 2.8. All of these are radically expensive lenses, radically. Um, this is serial number 75, this one's serial number 66. Yeah. Not many people were buying these lenses when they came out because they said, oh, I'd like to have that, but oh my god, look at that price, you're crazy, you German you crazy, I'm half German, so I could say this, right? You crazy ass Germans, you want too much damn money for those lenses. And that is an accurate statement. The uh, fo folks in Deutschland, you have to say it like that. <laughs> the folks in Deutschland want a little bit too much for these lenses. But uh, they are exquisitely made. The fit, finish, and blah, 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 all down the line, just... Uh, it doesn't match a Voigtlander. It's like, what about compared to a Voigtlander, which I'm familiar with? You know, Japanese always had better optics uh, than the Germans did. Um, compared to a Voigtlander, a Voigtlander is about 15% better, maybe 10% better than these. And uh, the Voigtlanders are a lot cheaper. Like, here's a Voigtlander. It's almost exact, you know, this has got six elements in it. This one's like 699. This one's 1699. This one is smoother, better fit, better finish, on and on and on. This is the Heliar 75mm 1.8, I believe, isn't it? Mm, yeah, yeah, that's what it is. So, yeah. Germans, I think it must be that, uh, that, uh, that, uh, uh, socialized labor. Why am I putting that lens cap on that lens for? It must be the socialized labor that makes up the $1,000. Of the <laughs> I'm going to edit that out of this video. It might offend some people. Yeah, the uh, socialist, uh, the, uh, <laughs> excuse me, <laughs> the union. Note to self, there's no such thing, there's no difference between socialism and unions. Uh, one and the same thing. I'm going to edit that out also. <laughs> That's probably where the $1,000 of the $1,600 price tag comes from on this is, <coughs> yeah, yeah, unions. Unions, yeah. 
Yeah, that's what you're paying for. I'm paying for someone's union dues when I paid $1,600 for this. Of course, I didn't pay $1,600 for this lens, but... Anyway, there is no other video like this on the internet. I have definitely given you the most comprehensive compare and contrast and talk about the old one versus the new one versus which the hell is better and why the hell it's better. And Because uh, I know these three lenses are really good. I have had my mitts on them for a long time. This is my lens. This is also my lens. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching. If you like these videos, always click the link below. Join my Patreon. Tell me to jump off a cliff. Since I have no affiliate links or sponsorships, any donation is kindly appreciated because I'm killing my ass making videos and answering emails and phone calls. People love to call me too when I'm in the bathroom. The phone will just ring and ring and ring. I'm like, damn. Uh, phew, calm down. <sighs> calm down. Where's my coffee at? Where's my coffee at? Yeah. Yep. And, um, yeah, but for $1,400, they do give you <laughs> overpriced uh, German stuff. Or BMWs. Well, I know some BMWs are sure made in the United States, made in Germany. They're always breaking down. I think BMW stands for bust out my wallet because they're always breaking down. Um, German quality is not as good as it used to be. But hey, at least it's not American-made quality. We all know how Americans make crap. Got uh, Billy Bob the booze swiller, you know, working on the assembly line. Hung over. <laughs> you wonder why your American-made car doesn't work very well. I would never buy an American-made vehicle. Because they suck. I would not. I want Japanese precision. Hey! <laughs> I'm going to end it there because I've talked too much. So there we go. There's the Meyer Optic Gerlitz Trioplan, Trioplan, and Primoplan. Yeah. Yeah. German precision. Yep. Overpriced. Overpriced German precision. Thank you. Goodbye.